Assalamu alaikum this is Dr Hasna with another video of Hasna's anatomy and today we'll be discussing the topic of the anastomosis around the knee joint so before we begin let me just recall that the anastomosis is basically a channel connecting uh, a group of vessels with each other providing collaterals in case one vessel gets blocked so this anastomosis is occurring around the knee joint quite similar to the elbow joint anastomosis however in this case there are two bones that are involved in the anastomosis because the knee joint is basically going to be formed by these two bones including the patella this is the lower end of femur and this is the upper end of the tibia and just in front of them is a patella bone so this is overall forming the knee joint fibula is not involved in this articulation so the anastomosis around the knee joint basically has a superficial and a deep part the superficial part is mostly occurring around the patella while the deep part is occurring in the femur and the tibia so let's get right into it let's suppose that this is the medial side this is the lateral side of both the tibia and the femur this is the medial condyle of the femur this is the lateral condyle of femur this is the medial condyle of the tibia and this is the lateral condyle of the tibia let's go through what we've learned up to now basically we're going to talk about the arteries so if you all remember anterior compartment's main vessel was the femoral artery the femoral artery gave the profunda femoris artery and femoral artery also gave a branch called the descending genicular artery all right of importance is the fact that wherever the word genicular is mentioned it means it is related to the knee joint so genicular hence this branch of the femoral artery has something to do with the knee joint all right so femoral artery basically gives a descending genicular branch descending genicular branch also gives another branch called the saphenous branch moreover the femoral artery gives the profunda femoris artery which was a very major artery or the very major branch of the femoral artery the profunda femoris artery then gave the medial circumflex femoral the lateral circumflex femoral laterally lateral circumflex femoral artery and we all know that the lateral circumflex femoral artery gave its ascending branch and a transverse branch to the trochanteric and cruciate anastomosis also the lateral circumflex femoral artery has a descending branch also i want to discuss about the popliteal artery if you all remember popliteal artery was basically in the popliteal fossa which is lying posterior to the entire knee joint the popliteal artery was responsible for giving two superior medial and lateral genicular artery and two inferior medial and lateral genicular artery if you all remember these genicular arteries will take major part in the anastomosis of knee joint as they will move anteriorly and they will on all four parts of the uh, anastomosis they will be contributing the most all right so this is suppose the superior medial genicular this is the superior lateral genicular this is the inferior medial this is the inferior lateral genicular moreover the popliteal artery also when it terminated it gave two branches called the anterior tibial and the posterior tibial why am i mentioning these two because anterior tibial then gave a anterior tibial recurrent artery and a posterior tibial recurrent artery keep these two in mind that the fact that they are coming from the anterior tibial artery the posterior tibial artery only gave one branch called the circumflex fibular artery so now that you finally know the major arteries and their major branches the anastomosis around the knee joint will become a piece of cake for you so anastomosis of the knee joint is broadly divided into four parts above the medial condyle of the femur below the medial condyle of the tibia above the lateral condyle of the femur and below the lateral condyle of the tibia let's talk about the medial side above the medial condyle of the femur which branches undergo anastomosis well since it's above and it's medial so superior medial genicular branch of the popliteal artery and it anastomoses with the descending genicular artery above the medial condyle of the femur what happens next is that below the medial condyle of the tibia 
the anastomosis takes place between the inferior medial genicular branch obviously because it's below and it's in the medial side so popliteal artery will give its inferior medial genicular branch and from above comes the saphenous branch of the descending genicular artery which is going to anastomose with this artery. This is happening below the medial condyle of the tibia. What happens on the lateral side? Above the lateral condyle of the femur, similarly, the superior lateral genicular artery will come and anastomose with descending branch of the lateral circumflex femoral artery because it's lateral circumflex femoral, hence it will come on the lateral side. And below the lateral condyle, the anastomosis takes place between the inferior lateral genicular branch of the popliteal artery and one, two, three. All three of these will go and anastomose with the inferior lateral genicular branch. All right. So the anterior tibial recurrent, the posterior tibial recur recurrent and the circumflex fibular arteries. These will anastomosis below the lateral condyle of the tibia. Now what happens is the medial and the lateral arteries will form longitudinal anastomosis with each other as well they will form a transverse anastomosis between each other and this completes the anastomosis of the knee joint. The major function of this anastomosis is to supply the blood to the knee joint. So I really hope you understood the anastomosis around the knee joint. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel.